Now we explore arts and beauty, uh, a journey through visual, performing, musical, and sculptural arts, and also literature. First of all, let's define our terms, because it's always important to define our terms up front. So let's define arts and let's define beauty. First of all, the arts. The arts encompass a wide range of creative expressions, including visual, performing, musical, sculptural, and literature so really the arts are a creative expression more than anything else and then the beauty portion of this is in this context it refers to the aesthetic qualities that inspire a sense of admiration and emotional resonance when we say the word aesthetic really what we're we're saying is how they look <clears throat> how they look to us uh, how we perceive them with our senses and what is the significance of arts where arts hold a profound significance in human culture and expression uh, they provide a platform for individuals to convey their thoughts emotions and perspectives transcending language barriers. You know, that's why you can go to different places throughout the world and you can see beautiful things in the arts that have been produced, such as architecture. You know, I, I love the architecture of Japan, uh, but do I speak Japanese? No, but I can relish the beauty of the art that they have created in their culture even though I don't understand their language uh, also the a diversity of art forms uh, they highlight the diversity of art forms from the visual beauty of paintings uh, to the emotive power of music and narrative depths of literature so there is a diversity of forms that we can look at and a diversity of forms that are created by societies over time. Um, and then to diving into that, you know, when you look at art, it captures a certain time period. And we'll look at that moving forward. All right, first of all, the visual arts. What is the significance of visual art? Well, visual arts such as painting and sculpture are powerful mediums for communicating expression uh, or communication and expression. They allow artists to convey complex ideas, emotions, and stories through images. One of the things that's happening now is um, the introduction of artificial intelligence into art. And the fact now that you can you know, go into computer programs and say, will you create this, 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 and this, this image, and now that image will appear. Um, but before, of course, all this, these visit, the visual images were created by humans. And that's one of the things that made humans human because they conveyed ideas, emotions, and stories through images. Uh, of course, examples of this throughout time, of course, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, uh, known for its mysterious beauty, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Uh, I was sitting with my niece at a, a family gathering and I was sitting next to her and I was looking at her phone and she had her phone 
turned over and on the back there was a picture of a cat in a top hat and a suit done in the style of Van Gogh's self-portrait. Um, there was something um, somewhat mysterious about it and uh, it was funny and cute. Of course also Michelangelo's David and it's celebrated for its artistic and sculptural beauty. So the visual arts. Well, there are other forms of art, as we have discussed, and the next one we are discussing is performing arts. And so if we're going to define performing arts, we're going to say that the performing arts encompass activities like theater, dance, and music that are performed live in front of an audience. They captivate the audience through storytelling, movement, and sound. Now, these are performing arts. So automatically we think of something like the ballet going to a play, uh, maybe in New York or somewhere local, and going to see a play. Well, um, performing arts could be that or uh, really anything. If you go... Um, to Paris and you see a mime. <laughs> well, a, a mime on the street, that's uh, performing arts. Um, it's something else. It's, it's really um, captivating how, how people can do that. Um, I think about, you know, comedians. Uh, I think, you know, I like comedy and I like listening to comedy. And when you go to a comedic show, that's a performing art. That person has come up with a material and he is presenting it to a audience. It's an art form. Um, as far as captivating audience, we can discuss how performing arts engage and captivate audiences emotionally and intellectually. And they can transport spectators to different worlds and invoke a wide range of emotions. You know, you could think of a speech as a performing art. Yes, they are trying to co convey information but at the same time, they're doing it with some passion. They're doing it, uh, hopefully, with a sense of urgency. And there is you know, a, a, an element of acting and performing in that. I had a teacher tell me years ago that we're all just failed actors. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was funny and uh, because in, in some essence, she's correct. When a teacher stands up in front of a group of students, they're performing to an extent. And then we could look at examples like Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, um, a ballet like Swan Lake, or the Phantom of the Opera. Now, these are classically what are thought of as performing arts. Another art form, of course, is musical arts. And maybe this is one of the better known uh, forms of art that we have today. And it can be a wide ranging in uh, genre of music uh, you could have a, a wide range and it still be considered, of course, a musical art. Um, but, the, but the power of music, we need to explain the profound impact that music has on human emotions and experiences. Yeah. Music has the unique ability to invoke strong feelings, transport us to different moods, and tell stories without words. Um, of course, this is classical music, telling stories without words. You know, many of um, the musical stylings today are focused uh, primarily on what is said. Um, 
But then you have musical compositions like Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, uh, even to the Beatles' Abbey Road. Uh, any, there are a lot of Beatles songs that you could throw in here. Yeah, which Abbey Road is the actual studio they used. Um, you can think of something like Hey Jude. Of course, you're telling stories with the musical accompaniment. Um, and then uh, the Magic Flute by Mozart. You can talk about anything here at this point, any kind of genre of music and what people do with music to motivate themselves. You know, A lot of people have workout playlists where they'll go into it and they'll listen to certain music because it pumps them up or at um, football games certain music will be used like i know when i was coming through as a teenager um i don't know why, why they did it looking back on it now but you know they would play welcome to the jungle before a football game uh something something like that yes which is um a, a pretty powerful song to get you going and Think about all those stadium anthems that you hear and, you know, you go to somewhere like Boston and you'll hear Sweet Caroline. Um, and they have a way of bringing us together, changing our mood, transporting us. And that's the musical arts. <laughs> Sculptural arts. Um, what are sculptural arts? Well, the, uh, in this, we explore the world of sculpture and its role in beautifully beautifying spaces. Uh, sculpture capture the essence of the object in three-dimensional form, uh, adding a unique aesthetic. Again, there's that word. How something looks, aesthetic dimensions to the environment. So, you know, some people are sculptural artists and they express um, how they feel. It's not really, you know, sometimes it's emotions, sometimes it's a thought or an idea, sometimes it's just wanting to express themselves in order to uh, create happiness in others you know you think about going to some place like chicago and going to the sculpture they call the bean well it looks it's a mirrored giant beam uh bean that people you know will go up to and see themselves and see their friends you know in this mirrored bean and they'll take pictures near it and and it's it's a neat thing to see, but it's a sculptural art. It's a sculptural presentation. So we don't have to think just of something like an example of uh, Rodin's The Thinker, which is a sculpture of a man in a pose, which looks like he's thinking or contemplating something. Um, there's modern forms of sculptural art. Um, and then uh, the Venus de Milo, of course, ancient Greece, and then uh, the reclining figure of Henry Moores, known for the abstract, abstract and uh, dynamic beauty. So it's not just about capturing the human form. Sculptural art can be much more than that, but and nevertheless an expression of artistic design. And of course, be, uh, literature is itself an art form. And we can discuss how literature through the written word explores the human experience and the concept of beauty. Now, literature allows authors to convey emotions, ideas, beauty through storytelling and language. And usually this is thought of as you know fictional writing these are 
um, stories that have been made up. But even in made up stories, there are elements of reality. Because how can you make up a story if you cannot base it upon something? Um, it won't be based upon something that is direct, but there is there are images and allusions to the real in fictional tales. Um, and some just are works of poetry like uh, Shakespeare's Sonnet 18, uh, celebrating uh, the beauty of the beloved, and Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, uh, of course a classic novel exploring the themes of love and social expectations, and then um, Marquetta's uh, 100 Years of Solitude, uh, known for its renowned beauty for the magical realism and the narrative beauty. You can think of modern, more modern literature like that of Harry Potter. It's a artistic expression. And uh, the, the Twilight series was the same way. There were elements of the magical in those. But at the same time, we're dealing with real emotion and feelings ideas told in a story that is you know magical and mythical but at the same time elements of reality so much so that they connect to us in our current state now where, where do these intersect how do these come together well we need to explain the intersection of arts and beauty uh, we need to explain the different forms and they often intersect creating uh, multi-dimensional aesthetic experiences for instance a ballet performance set to classical music combine both the visual and the auditory beauty so you you've got the coming together of these different forms of art creating a beautiful expression in the example of a ballet and the musical accompaniment and that showcases um we need to showcase instances where these converge like a visually stunning film with an evocative musical score um, you know there are some films that have been made throughout history that are known more for their music than even the film itself um, you can think of jaws um, you know <laughs> that that movie no, you know, a, a lot of people watched it, but, um, you know, a lot of people my age, of course, probably didn't watch it as much as our older generations. But if we hear, da 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 automatically we think of this shark coming after it because Steven Spielberg put this into a movie and now we have a musical score that evokes an emotion um, and then of course sculpture that uh, captivates the essence of a beautiful object uh, through its form and material so there are inter intersections that are taking place between the arts and beauty what about contemporary art and beauty here we can um, challenge the notions of beauty discuss how contemporary artists challenge the traditional notions of beauty by pushing boundaries and experimenting with new forms materials and concepts of course now we have 
uh, forms, materials, and concepts that we did not have in previous generations. You know, we have you know, 3D printers <laughs> that now can, we, we can write code into a computer and tell a computer what to do and they can create what we want. Um, so we've gone past even, you know, pen and paper, uh, sculpture, uh, paintings, um, to into something new and something more modern. Um, I'm going to highlight contemporary artist movement, like the abstract art of Pablo Picasso. And which challenges traditional representation. You know, Picasso's art at that time was, you know, of course, modern. Every art at the time it's done is modern art. Um, but it seemed to go into a realm of something new, Picasso's art does. And then you know, someone like Banksy today with street art, that is something that is, um, much more contemporary and you know Pablo Picasso as many paints as he had did not have spray paint um, so there are new and modern technologies that one can use to create artistic expression and push the boundaries um, And what's the impact of art and beauty? Well, uh, they have a societal and a personal impact. So here we can explain the profound impact of the in, engaging with art and beauty on both a societal and a personal level. Uh, the arts inspire creativity, foster empathy, and contribute to personal growth. You know, we, we do have that. But when you think about particularly architecture and when you go to some place like Washington, there is a societal impact when you look at the White House, the Capitol, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, all of these are there to remind us of who we were and to inspire us to who we can be. And that happens on a societal level, but it also has, it happens on a personal level. Um, you know, it could be something as simple as going to a certain place and being so inspired by the art there and the beauty of that place that one would go on to you know, learn architecture because they see the beauty that has been created and they want themselves to create beauty that will inspire others. Um, so I want to encourage y'all, I'm going to encourage the audience to discuss um, their experiences with art. Really here, just think about your experiences with the arts and how they have influenced you, uh, whether through emotional connection, personal growth, or creative inspiration. So think about that. Um, can you point to... some element of art and the beauty of that art that has inspired you to do something, inspired you to change something. Um, what kind of impact has art had on your life? And I just want to summarize this um, and look at a few things. The exploration of arts and beauty reveals a profound and enriching journey through 
various creative expressions. In this presentation, we delved into the diverse realms of visual, performing, musical, sculptural, and literature, recognizing the significance of art in human culture and expression. Um, remember, art is a universal language. It transcends cultural differences. It transcends language. And art can be found in diverse forms. Uh, the world of art is incredibly diverse, encompassing visual masterpieces, captivating performances, emotive music, sculptural wonders, and the evoking power of evo evocative power of literature. Um, each art form offers a unique lens through which to explore beauty. Uh, we have intersections and convergences when art forms collide, such as uh, going to a performance with musical overlay. Uh, also, contemporary challenges to tradition, uh, contemporary art challenging what was uh, at one point the style but now has changed. You have that. Uh, you also have an encouragement for exploration. Uh, as we continue to e the explore uh, the exploration of arts and beauty, we uh, encourage you to continue your journey. Embrace this diversity of art forms. Uh, find personal connection. Reflect on your personal connections with art and beauty. Engage with art. Um, engage actively with the arts by attending exhibitions, performances, concerts, literary events, uh, discover new artists, genres, uh, and movements, and allow them to inspire you for your own creative spirit. So in essence, the exploration of arts and beauty is an ongoing and rewarding endeavor. It not only enriches our lives, but also fosters a deeper understanding of ourselves and the diverse cultures that shape the world. So embrace the beauty that surrounds us and the beauty that we create, for it is a source of inspiration, connection, and profound enrichment. I uh, hope you have found this to be enlightening and to help you a little bit to understand the intersection between art and beauty. So if I was going to ask some discussion questions, I may not ask the full question, but you can pause right here and you can see some of the questions that, that might come up later. I may not put it in its full form again, you know, but like number four down here, I'm, how has engagement with arts, uh, be it visual, performing, musical, or literary, influenced your personal growth, cre creativity, and empathy? That'd be a good question. Um, so you may see one of those questions again. Uh, again, I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.